And now to the terrible predicament facing hundreds of thousands of low income Texas families. They make too much money to get Medicaid, but not enough to buy private insurance. Texas Republican leaders refused to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act, which would cover these Texans. But a state senator argues there is another way that leaders should look at this. State Senator Nathan Johnson is a Dallas Democrat. He is in studio this morning. It's good to see you. Thank you very much for having me on the show and for framing the issue this way. Well, I, let's, let's dive into it. What is the business case you think that uh, lawmakers should look at? Well, look, a, a healthy population equals a healthy economy. We're not only faced here with a moral problem of people that don't have health insurance who can't live healthy lives. This is about productivity. The fact is, if we do this, if we do what we can do along with 36 other states and partner with the federal government and bring our tax dollars back, we can provide more people with better care for less money, increase productivity, create jobs, and overall strengthen our economy all at once, and we can do it for free. And we can do it on a nonpartisan basis. Well, Governor Abbott says the Medicaid system is a broken system. What's your response to that? Well, I think he was talking about this in the past. That's number one. Uh, at the time, there were problems with cost, and we still have concerns about cost. And what states like Ohio have done is examined what they perceived as a broken system and said, costs are running away. What can we do to contain these costs? So when we approach this from a standpoint of let's enact Medicaid in a way that controls our costs, we're no longer looking at a broken system. And and somebody like Governor Abbott or any conservative who looks at this issue and says, how can we make sure we're not spending too much money and making people healthier? Oh, well, if we do it our own Texas way, then it works. And that's what I want Governor Abbott and everyone else to do. Realize we can do this in a way that works for Texas, controlling costs and increasing access to health care. But Senator, you know that several bills were filed in the last legislative session following the lead of other states to let voters decide. Right. And that didn't even pass. How in the world do you think you're going to convince Republicans of this? Well, it's a different time, right? So the question is how this is not new information. States, 36 states have expanded Medicaid. They've done it for the last six years. So one of the differences now as opposed to then is we've got the data. We can look with hindsight. Is this working or is this not working? Turns out it is working. For 36 states, it's working. Secondly, um, we have a fiscal cliff we're facing. We weren't facing a fiscal cliff before. We are going to lose $12 billion per budget cycle if we don't fix this problem right now. That pressure tends to focus legislators. Thirdly, it's the issue of the session, right? Just like education was the big issue last session and people paid attention to it and we got it done, healthcare is the issue this session. Those three things are gonna drive the momentum we need to do something that works for the state of Texas. The elephant in this conversation is obviously Obamacare, which Republicans you know, do not like, but the legal threat against Obamacare still remains out there. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, just struck down the individual mandate. So what does this mean for, for thousands of Texans out there who have purchased insurance through it? Yeah, it effectively means nothing. Uh, the law of the land stands. Uh, the decision of the district court that was up on appeal uh, was upheld only as to one tiny little provision. But as for the Affordable Care Act standing, Justice John Roberts, the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, has swatted away arguments against Obamacare, against the Affordable Care Act, twice already. And those arguments made a lot more sense than the ridiculous opinion that has come up so far. I mean, it's essentially this opinion says that if your front door is stuck, we have to demolish your house. That is not going to stand up. This is, a, this is conjecture, and it's people worried about something that might happen that won't happen. Here's what will happen. We will lose $12 billion by any if we don't fix this problem. I don't think Congress or the courts are going to allow a system that 220 million people around yeah. the nation rely on to fall. All right, State Senator Nathan Johnson, good to see you again, and good luck on uh, making this case to your fellow colleagues there in the Senate. Thank you. Luck helps. <laughs> All right, we appreciate it.